All right, in this first example, we're just going to look at finding uh, tangent lines, slopes of tangent lines, and tangent lines with prescribed slopes. So find the slope of the tangent to the asteroid, x equals a cos cubed of theta, y equals a sine cubed of theta, as a function of the parameter theta. And then once we have that, then we'll figure out at what points is the tangent line horizontal and vertical, and what points does the tangent line have slope 1, what about slope negative 1. Okay, so here is the parameterization x equals a cos cubed theta, y equals a sine cubed theta. In order to find the derivative dy by dx, we need to know the derivatives of each of these things with respect to theta. So dx d theta is, this is going to be a chain rule, it's a composition of cosine with the cube. a is just a constant, so this is going to be 3a cos squared theta times the derivative of the inside function, which is cos, so that's negative sine theta. dy d theta is 3a sine squared theta times the derivative of sine, which is cos theta. Therefore, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to, well, it's dy d theta divided by dx d theta, which is 3a sine squared theta cos theta over negative 3a cos squared theta sine theta. So a lot of stuff cancels, leaving us with a negative sine, a sine up top, and a cosine in the bottom. So there's our derivative of y with respect to x in terms of the variable theta. At what points is the tangent line horizontal and vertical? So let's have a look here. Okay, actually before I compute these things, let's look at the curve and just see what bits of information we have about various points on the curve. So we've got x is a cos cubed theta, y is a sine cubed theta. What happens when theta is zero? Well, when theta is zero, Cosine is 1, sine is 0, so it gives us this point here, which is a 0. What about when theta is pi by 2? Well, cosine would be 0, so the x value would be 0, so it would be one of the, either the top or the bottom, that corresponds to x value 0. And the y value when theta is pi by 2, sine of pi by 2 is 1, so that corresponds to this point up here. So this is 0, a, which also corresponds to the point theta equals pi by 2. Maybe I'll indicate down here that this was theta equals 0. By similar analogy, we can sort of keep going. We can say, OK, well, this corresponds to theta equals pi. And the values of the x and y coordinates are negative a and 0. Down here, this is theta equals 3 pi by 2, and it is x is 0, y is negative a, and then we get very other, uh, various other points along the way. As theta increases, we can see that the asteroid is getting traced out in this way. Okay, so where is the tangent line horizontal? Well, horizontal means that the derivative's got to be 0. The derivative is dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So in order for that to be 0, we need dy by d theta to be 0. And I better make sure that the deriv or the bottom, the denominator, is non-zero. So dx by d theta better not be 0. OK, so that means that sine of theta has to be 0. And where is sine of theta 0? Sine of theta is 0 when theta is 0 and pi. So those are the theta values where the tangent line is horizontal. What are the corresponding points? We get those points by plugging each of these theta values back into the parameterization. So x, y is equal to, when I plug 0 in, I get cosine is 1, so that's a and 0. 
when I plug pi in, I get cosine is negative 1, so that's negative a and 0. So there's our corresponding points. And so the, these are these points here. There's where the tangent lines are horizontal. So draw little tangent line segments there. What about where the tangent line is vertical? Well, this is where, maybe you want to think about it, this is where the derivative is infinite. Uh, a better way to think about it is this is where the reciprocal of the derivative, so 1 over the derivative, is 0. So it's when 1 over this negative sine theta over cos theta is 0. Or equivalently, it's where the rate of change in x with respect to theta is 0, but the rate of change in y with respect to theta is non-zero. And so this is where cosine of theta is 0, which means that theta is pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. So plugging this into our parameterization, we can get our points. And our points are going to be x, y is equal to, when we plug pi by 2 in, cos of pi by 2 is 0, so that gives us 0, a. And the other one, when we plug 3 pi by 2 in, gives us 0 and negative a. So there are the points where we've got a vertical tangent line. So there's those points there. Now what about when the tangent has slope 1 and slope negative 1? So let's look at the place where the slope is 1. Where is the slope 1? Well, that's dy by dx is equal to 1. Or in other words, negative sine over cosine is 1. That's also just the tangent function. So it's when negative tan is 1. Or in other words, where tan theta is negative 1. And that means that theta has to be, well, when is tan theta negative 1? So maybe I'll draw a little picture here of the unit circle just to see where is tan theta negative 1, what angles is the tangent negative 1. Well, it's going to be over here and over here. And so this is, the reference angle is going to be pi by 4 here. So this is going to be you know, pi minus pi by 4. So that, that there is a pi by 4. So you can think of it as pi minus pi by 4. Or in other words, it's 3 pi by 4. And in that lower one, you can think of it as maybe 2 pi minus pi by 4. If you want to think of it that way. And so that's 7 pi by 4. So those are the two theta values. And that means our points are going to be, well, these are x, y values, 3 pi by 4. That would be a cos of 3 pi by 4 is negative 1 over root 2. Cubing that is negative 1. 1 over 2 root 2. And the sine value would be a over 2 root 2. And the corresponding values for when we plug 7 pi by 4 in, we get a over 2 root 2 and negative a over 2 root 2. And so there are the points where the tangent line has slope 1. And we go to our graph over here, and they are these points here. So this corresponds to theta equals 7 pi by 4, and this is theta equals 3 pi by 4. What about when the slope is negative 1? Well, that's dy dx is equal to negative 1, or the tangent function is 1. And that means that theta is pi by 4, or 5 pi by 4. Plugging those values back into the original parametric equations, we get that the x, y values of the point are going to be a over 2 root 2, a over 2 root 2, or negative a over 2 root 2, and negative a over 2 root 2. So those are the values we get. And in terms of our diagram, they are these ones here. So that's theta equals uh, 5 pi by 4. And the one above here, 
slope is negative 1, and that's theta equals pi by 4. All right. So this was just a quick refresher on derivatives involving parametric curves. Again, this, this particular example was an example that was probably covered in Calculus 1. Perhaps not this one exactly, but one similar to it. Now we're going to get into areas, arc lengths, and surface areas. And so this will be the, the new stuff, the integral calculus, which involves parametric curves.